Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to continue with sys objects. In this one, we're going to learn how to reverse engineer the primary key. Hope you enjoy this video. In part one, I introduce you to sys.objects, schemas, columns, sys types, extended properties, and check constraints. And then I told you about this one SQL statement that will give you kind of like a big overview of the catalog you're about to use. So very quickly, you can understand what is available. This is gold. This is a golden nugget. So part one is all done. If you need to go back and review that video, just do it. In fact, do it every day until you become the master. In part two, we're going to be looking at primary keys. Now notice select star from sys objects where type is you. What is you? That's right. User tables. Let's do that. Schema equals five. Now you can see here we have six tables. They're all sharing the same schema, human resources. Now, if we needed to know that, we could go up against sys.schemas, human resources. You knew that from example one, part one. Now we're going to get into something new. We're going to get into key constraints. Let's just say top 10 here, star from key constraints, and let's see what's available to us. Notice that we get a constraint name and then an object name and then schema. You already know schema. Now parent ID is what we've been calling ID earlier. So sometimes we see that, you know, like a sys.objects is object ID. But when we're dealing with other type of objects, we have to look back at the parent object ID. Then notice here we have the type. And then we have the primary, uh, the type description. So this is called a primary key constraint. That's a PK. Now there's one other column that's very, very important here. And that's called the unique index ID. Now we're going to see in a moment how important this one field is. But can you please write that down and say, it's important. I really need to understand that. And when he shows that to me, um, I'm going to put that in the bank. Okay, so here we go. So there's one way to query this table. I can say type is primary key, PK, execute that. Or I can do the same command and just go all long wind on that and call it primary key constraint. Notice I get the same results. No difference. Let's dissect this SQL statement. Notice I'm saying select. We'll come back to these field names in just a moment. Sys.objects, learn that part one. I'm going to alias that as obj. And then I'm going to left join system constraints, kc, where the parent object ID equals the object ID. And then notice here I said the object ID type is u. u is user table. Object schema equals five. And that equals human resources. Here's something important. Why did I do a left join on sys key constraints? I'm looking for a primary key. The rule is not all tables need primary keys. And if we're going to use a primary key, we can only have one primary key per table. And what is the use? of a primary key. Why do we need that? I can think of several things. The first one and most important is when I do a select statement, using the primary key guarantees I can get a unique row. And knowing I can get a new a unique row allows me steps two and three. Two, I can do an update statement. I can do an update statement that does updates one row. And I can do a delete statement that will only delete one row. So those are the three things that you need to know about a primary key. They're very, very important. And when we use a code generator, you will see that I use a primary key exclusively for my updates and delete statements. I know how to use them. I'm going to teach you how to unwind this database so you can do it too. Let's do it. Now, executing this select statement from 29 to 39, you'll notice my output. 
Notice my table object ID 702. It's got a bunch more numbers. It's for the table called shift. Let's look at the object explorer and see what's going on. Notice when I look at the object explorer for human resources shift, I can see with my eyes that there is just one column that makes up the primary key. It's called shift ID. Then I can go down to keys and notice that I can see there's a primary key called PK shift shift ID. That is the primary key. And then I can go down to indexes and then I can see at the very bottom that same key name PK shift underscore shift ID. It's a clustered index. Here's a test question. How many primary keys can I have on a single table? Just one that is correct. Now let's unwind it from the sys tables and let's go find out what this one column is called. Notice I went up against sys.keyconstraints where object ID equals that 702 number and it gave me the primary key constraint for this one table called shift. Remember shift had a primary key that had one column but how do we know that? If you scroll over and you see this unique index ID. Notice in my second SQL statement, I'm saying sys indexes for that same table. But notice I get back four columns. Now you see this one column called index ID. Do you see the value one in there? Well, one maps to that primary key constraint. So all we have to do is come in there and add that additional where clause and we only get the number of columns that make up the primary key. In key constraints, unique index ID value is one. Notice I'm on the index columns and I say I see index ID equals one. That one value comes from key constraints and notice we have our one column. One column is used to make up the primary key. I hope you understand how important this one column is over here if you want to be successful. Putting all those things that we just learned together, coming from sysobjects, that 702 number, I'm going to join that with key constraints. Notice I'm going to be using the object ID from sysobjects, but it's the parent object in key constraints. Then I'm going to join it with the index column. Notice that key fill from the uh, key constraints, unique index ID equals the index ID. Notice when I execute this, I just get the number of columns that make up my primary key. And notice for the table shift, there's only one column. Just one more look at human resources shift. We just have one column that make up the primary key. And now you know how to unwind the sys objects, key constraint and index columns to get those values. And here is the gold. You can remember why I'm doing a left join on key constraints. So we're going to go through objects, key constraints, index columns, columns, and schemas. For that object ID that begins with 702, I'm going to order by the object ID and the column ID. This is great for when I have more than one column. And notice for shift, shift has one column and it's called shift ID. There you have it guys. That is the primary key SQL server. And there you have part two, the primary key. You know, primary key is a very important part of being a database. In fact, you've learned in this video that not every table needs a primary key and one per table and why we need it, that select statement and update and delete, you know that. Now when we start thinking about a code generator, we have to remember all those little facts and guess what? A thousand others. So this right here will make you the master of databases. Now I've been doing it for 30 years and I always say, if I can do it, anyone can do it. And that is the honest truth. So hang in there. Let's go step by step and let me help you become the master. Okay team, we'll see you back in the next video. Have a great week.